So there's this movie coming out this weekend that a lot of people were really excited about. Actually, it's technically Arya. It's called Star Wars Force Awakens. And I just want to take this time to actually discuss one of my favorite Star Wars memories, which is actually this title screen. I'm not even kidding. As a kid, I thought this title screen was absolutely hilarious. I actually find it more hilarious now because actually knowing how much of like a uh, sourpuss George Lucas is. Uh, uh, if you think Star Wars, it just to me is absolutely hilarious that they did something like that as the opening of this game. So the Star Wars Rogue Leader, which is a game that everybody likes, but not everyone has really played. <laughs> uh, yeah, tragic, but not a whole lot of people have played this game. Um, to be fair, I haven't played this game in years. Uh, this was actually like my first- This was a GameCube launch house, so it makes sense that it was like the first GameCube game I ever played when I was like, six. So it's nostalgic. Let's just jump straight into the game. Um, and discuss why. So when I was like six, obviously I had no expectations of video games, because all I had at the time was an NES. Yeah, that's a kind of a big jump, jumping three generations at once. But then again, I was also a 90s kid, so that doesn't mean too much. I mean, yeah, I didn't grow up with every console, so yeah, and yes, the GameCube. That's the, the graphics jump we're talking here. And I'd be lying if I said I was a Star Wars fan. To be honest, I don't exactly have fond memories of the movies I like. 4, 5, and 6 I like. At the time I liked 1 through 3, but in hindsight, I will fully admit that 1 through 3 are kind of trash. Um, I'm also in the minority that think that episode 5 is actually the worst of the original trilogy. But I, there's no way in heck I'd call it the worst Star Wars movie, obviously, because that's just like way too far. Um, but one of my fondest Star Wars memories was actually this game. Like, to be honest, this was probably one of my first Star Wars memories, period. Because at the time I had only seen New Hope. And then I played this game at like a Target, I think. When I was like five or six. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually really amazing. Because I didn't know video games were out of 8th gen then. By 2001. <laughs> Um, and in hindsight, I will fully admit that the graphics in this game probably are really bad. They probably really suck. But again, think about it. From like Mario Bros. to this, this was like the bomb. This was like so impressive to me as a kid that, like, this was like the future. I mean, now you think about Star Wars and you think, oh, look. Battle Pod, that thing that like almost like practically VR Star Wars game that Namco Bandai put out. Or Battlefront, holy cow, that looks so lifelike. Like, oh my gosh, an actually decent video game representation of Harrison Ford. Who would have thunk back in 2001? But to me at the time, it's like this was like as good as it got. It's like we hit a ceiling. We'll never get past this. This is as good as games will be. <laughs> Turns out I was way wrong, because I was six. But, oh well. Uh, to be fair, this game still looks amazing. Uh, uh, oh, inverted axes. I hate inverted axes. Pause. Settings. Um, you can't switch the axes in this game, apparently. Uh, that's a little bit... Interesting, <laughs> a little bit suspect, but okay, we'll just have to go with inverted axes. Um, but to be honest, how does this game look? Uh, to someone objectively, probably pretty bad. But to me, having grown up with this game, I can overlook a lot. It still plays really well. I'm pretty sure it's 60 FPS. Again, I'm not good at gauging frame rate, so I'm just guessing. It looks 60 FPS to me. Um, Cockpit view is actually really bad because <laughs> you can't see nothing. Um, a shoots, B does torpedoes or bombs if you're a Y wing. But then again, who would want to fly a Y wing on the Death Star? Probably no one. Um, R boosts, L breaks, uh, D pad is 
controls, like for squad controls. Uh, top right corner is radar, the little orange deal is your uh, objective pinpoint marker thing. I don't know what to call it. Blow up turrets. That. Uh, actually, to get ranks, which I will go into in a minute, you actually do have to destroy more turrets than I actually did. I am not going to get a good rank because I blew up nothing. Again, does this game look good? Probably not. But again, imagine if you were like six years, six years old and playing this game. Then it'd be like, oh wow, this is actually really cool. <laughs> so, um, you can actually look out of the X-Wing, which is so cool. Uh, there's no like realistic glass or anything like in Battlefront, but still it's like, again, at the time this was as good as it got graphically. Heck, this was the best looking Star Wars game for years. Um, I remember seeing reviews for Star Wars The Force Unleashed and they were discussing how even the Force Unleashed space battles look worse than this game graphically, at least on PS2 and Wii. Um, also notice how I haven't talked about Force Awakens at all. Because I know people are really trying to dodge spoilers lately, I'm not going to be discussing Force Awakens at all. Uh, so, you can thank me for that. <laughs> um, this is totally a retrospective. You can see the little things going up and down when you boost, that's cool. Uh, I keep getting the Y axis and just inverted. Oh, shoot, break. <laughs> uh, I should do this. Uh, yeah, I fully admit the graphics do look really fuzzy by today's standards, but I still think I will still defend this game to this day. A lot of people love Knights, a lot of people love Jedi Outcast, a lot of people love Battlefront, 1 and 2. This was like my childhood. <laughs> so I, I'm really biased, but this is my favorite Star Wars game to date. It was my first Star Wars game, for starters, that's a thing. That is a huge influence that this being my first Star Wars game, of course I'm going to like it. But there's just something about this that's just cool. The music kicks in and then you're just like, wow, I'm actually on the Death Star. <laughs> uh, as a kid, I probably played this mission about like a bazillion times. And you might be thinking, wow, that's a huge number. But actually, it's actually pretty accurate. I played this level a lot. And of course, no Death Star would be would be complete without the trench run. I sucked at this. It took me like ten tries to beat this as a kid. And look at me now. I haven't lost a single life. Uh, and if you want, if you're feeling really gutsy, you can do first person uh, down the trench, which is so cool. It's like very scary, but it's so cool. Uh, full speed. I'm going full speed, by the way. Uh, whoa, <laughs> I, I slowed down. You can't fire when boosting with the X-Wing because of the s foils and attack position. I had to get try to remember the actual terminology. Um, but yeah, if you want to get a good rank, you have to blow up stuff more so than I. I'm just trying to beat the mission. Uh, and about ranks, apparently the way it works is gold, silver, bronze, but if you do really well, you get a platinum rank. I never got a platinum in this game. I'm just gonna admit that right now. I did not get a platinum in this game. Rebel Strike is way easier the third game. Um, and this is the fun part. You have to actually break, and then you can do that. <laughs> um, hey, get back here. Um, Again, this begs the question of why is this trench run so long? You can zoom at the camera, but that's really stupid because they're TIE Fighters and you can't see where you are. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, this game uses analog triggers, I should point out. So, there's actual gradual steps to breaking. So, like, you can just break all the way like that, or you can just break a little bit. Because it's a GameCube game and it, you can do that stuff. Um, Really intuitive controls. Uh, oh yeah, the white button is the targeting computer. Ooh, we got the forest. We don't need that nonsense. Uh, then Darth Vader shows up, and then we're like, "Oh snap!" <laughs> you can't actually destroy the Tide Vance because, well, it's the Tide Vance. <laughs> um, it's special. Oh man, I almost died. Um, being a little bit cocky, ironically. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Also, speaking of which, speaking of that line, I guess there is actually a bonus game that I'll probably also show, show off that's really fun. But, oh yeah, Han Solo just saved the day. You can't really see them. I think you can actually see the Millennium Falcon flying off, but it's really hard. You have to be just at the right angle. And this is the end of the trench. Um, no targeting computer for us, we're going in blind. So, the tricky part is you have to actually fire it kind of low. It's not like straight ahead, you have to fire kind of low, I've discovered. And an actual movie clip. To me, as a kid, I never realized that. It's like, oh my gosh, the graphics are so good. But it's like, oh wait, there's a clip in the movie. <laughs> it's obvious now. Uh, yeah, barely missed out on silver. I'll take a bronze. To be honest, I was expecting getting nothing because I haven't played this game in like five months. Um, and even that was just like the first two missions. And I actually use the level select code to unlock everything from the get-go because I am lazy. I unfortunately don't... Oh, wait. Yeah, I unfortunately don't have the Death Star escape. This is a really fun mission now. Uh, I'll go through one more mission, which is another one of my favorites growing up. Um, the Battle of Hoth. Battle of Hoth has some interesting history because the game was actually, this level is actually, actually no, Rogue Squadron as a series was spawned because of a really really popular level of Star Wars Shadows of the Empire starring some sort of mercenary Dash Rendar who basically helps the rebels escape from Hoth and then has to fight Prince uh, Zizor and rescue Princess Leia, and then blow up a giant Imperial space station, big surprise, but basically Shadows of the Empire was a huge multimedia project spanning books and games, the game has apparently aged really badly, um, but at the time I was like, oh my gosh, Snow Spears, cool, <laughs> that was basically people's responses to the Hawk mission, so we're a so we're on Hoth now, and we can shoot probe droids. Uh, I'm gonna go first person for this, just because... Basically, move over Battlefront. This is the Battle of Hoth, right here. Um, Rogue Squadron, how can we help? Basically, Shadows of the Empire's Hoth level is so good that someone was like, you know what, let's just make a full, like, a really cool game, like, just all about ship battles, because apparently ship battles are the only good part of that game. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, someone was like, hey, let's make a cool game and do stuff. So, they did. Rogue Squadron also had a Hoth level, but was mostly expanded universe, because of weird rules. Uh, so it's just a very, like, basic, just tow cable, blow up ATST kind of thing. And this game went all out with the, the Hoth battle. You can actually blow up the AT-ATs before you're prompted to, that's something I loved to do as a kid. I don't know, maybe I was just really defiant as a kid, but I like sequence breaking. I still like sequence breaking, to be, to be fair. Um, it's rare when I actually play a game as intended. Except when it's just, like Nintendo, usually, because you can't break those too often. But like, if a game is broken, like a Sonic game, I will break it. Um, unintentionally, sometimes. So for the ATSC, so I'll aim with the head. Um, but yeah, again, Knights of the Old Republic is like the highest rated Star Wars game of all time. Everyone's favorite Star Wars game, but I just can't get into it because I grew up with this. And it's like, oh, nothing can top or squash into me. I think I took out all the ATSTs, so we should be triggering a cutscene soon. Oh, there's more over here. Um, oh, or well, cutscene. This is just tutorial mode. Uh, also, first time through, you can't skip cutscenes. I think that counts for your time bonus for medals. So when you're actually trying to medal games, you want to act, I mean, medal, get medals and missions. You want to skip cutscenes. This looks so primitive compared to Battlefront, but I don't know. There's something about this that's still really cool to me. I feel like Nassau is just playing a humongous role, but still. Also, it just occurred to me how horrible the sound of like is for Luke. I don't know if you can even hear it. I have the music really, really low, because I don't want to get copyright flagged. I should probably also mention that. 
Uh, Rebel Strike actually takes place right after this. You actually get a mission where Luke on foot has to like grapple up and like slice open all the ATS, ATATs, which is actually pretty cool. Um, interestingly, this game is much more focused on Wedge and Tilly's, which is like, why? <laughs> we want to be Luke or Han or someone cool. Why are we playing Wedge? Bring up the point that I don't think you actually play as Han in any of the games. Which is weird, because Han's like everyone's favorite. Yeah, Rogue Squadron is very Luke-centered, which I find it okay. Well, it's Rogue Squadron. You know, Luke being the head of Rogue Squadron in this universe. I'm pretty sure in the movie they actually also blow up the ATS, AT-80 -AT after it already falls. So this is like my the best worst part of the game for me. This is so cool if you can do it right. But it's been like five, ten years since I did this. <laughs> um, so I'm taking it very slow, as you might notice. And boom, we took out an AT-80. Let me do that. Oh. Fudge, I took out the wrong one. <laughs> well, that was dumb. You're supposed to take out these three advancing ATATs. Oh well. Um, snap. Well, I mean, literally. People snap. Just the music in this game, and all the sound effects going off, and just the atmosphere of this game. It's like just mind blowing that they were able to do this much in 2001. Heck, I mean, even the original Rogue Squad is pretty solid, considering the game is an N64 game. Um, I mean, think about it. Like, Rogue Squad is considered one of the best looking N64 games. That was a while ago. <laughs> I wish I could play that. I really wish I could. Unfortunately, with LucasArts' current situation of not existing, I don't think that's too likely. Also, Nintendo being horrible with eShop games. I don't think it's too likely. I'm almost hoping because Super Star Wars is on the um, PSN now for Vita and PS4. Part of me almost hopes that they might be able to release Rogue Squadron 1 through 3 on PS4 or Xbox One. I just want to replay these games in HD, <laughs> basically. I just want to play these games with like a modern controller in my hands, like with an Xbox One controller. That'd be so cool. Um, Cause these games were actually Nintendo exclusive back in the day, that's another thing. Uh, Jedi Starfighter was actually on PS2. And maybe Xbox, I don't remember, but yeah, actually the Rogue Squadron trilogy is actually Nintendo exclusive. I'm not gonna go into the remake, that's a whole nother can of worms, that is really ugly, that I don't wanna get into, so... So we took out the, the three advancing AT-ATs, but oh darn, we lost Walker Assault didn't have enough time because the mission is just totally broken so now it's not actually actually here with walker assault that's really bad on endor and like hoth is the only evenly matched match like that hoth is the only one they actually patched to be fair <laughs> the other ones are just super unfair also secret you want to go backwards just like what i had the guidebook the official nintendo power guidebook back in the day so trust me she used the force and um snap. Uh where is it? Hello, game. What was that rebel strike that I'm thinking of? There's a power up around I, I remember in either Rebel Strike or this game there's a power up where the shield generator is. Awaiting your orders. Or at least that's how I remember it being. Of course I got the power up when I was like seven, so Maybe I'm misremembering. Oh well. So, form up, I guess, because why not? See the ion cannon going off in the distance, which is so cool. Like, to be honest, this game's draw distance is great for, for the age of the game. I mean, look, you can see all those probe droids up ahead, and that's like another transport. It's like, this is really good draw distance for a 14 year old game. It's literally over 14 years old now, because it came out for as a launch title, which would have been November 19, 2001, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so now we're in X, so we're going to have to defend the Rebel Transports from TIE Bombers. 
Unfortunately, we don't have the homing upgrade, so we are kind of screwed. <laughs> um, yeah, I will manage. So these are TIE Bombers. Duh. Hence why they're dropping bombs. Because the Empire... No, the Empire is really bad by naming things. Uh, actually, no, it's George Lucas who's bad at naming things. Oh, look, we have a TIE Fighter. What should we call the bombing version? I don't know. I know, the TIE Bomber. But that aside, my accuracy is going to be poor here. <laughs> really poor. Um, I think you get a bonus if you protect all the transports, but that's really, really hard. Um, I'm not a Rogue Squadron expert or speedrun or anything like that. I fully admit being horrible at this game. Wow, draw distance. Stop zooming out so far. So far. Um, I don't have homing torpedoes, so that sucks. Rebel transport is way. Uh, also, the distance is actually zoomed, I think, slightly. Unlike Battlefront, where it's all the same view. It's just disorienting, actually switching first person to third person, because your aim is exactly the same, basically. Um, well, I destroyed all the TIE bombers, apparently. I am very curious to see how many allies I actually lost, because I thought I did pretty well. Shadows are a little murky at times, a little clipping stuff, but really, on the whole, this game looks fabulous. Yeah, it took too long because I was derping around trying to find a power up. And, um, I, yeah, just all these missions I really like. Um, video's getting long. Supposed to be a short retrospective, but then I played all of Hot House. Just gonna play part of it, actually. <laughs> oh well. Uh, I want to show about Endor, but maybe save that for another time. Heck, I might even do a full let's play of this game of this game at some point. But in any case, thank you for watching this little retrospective on Star Wars Battle Battlefront, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, Rogue Leader. I can't believe I said Battlefront.